Well, it is funny because there's a couple of details that leaked out about the contract yesterday, Dan, that I do want to dig into. Oh, see, see, well, you, <laughs> Ken, <laughs> are you doing anything for the next hour? Because <laughs> you and Ev can have at it, man. I'm here. Yeah, talk to him. I think I'm just going to do anything possible to push your buttons for these next three hours. <laughs> no, but but seriously, though, I, I think. Uh, all right, so you're tired of talking about it, but well, let's get it out of the way. Who won on that thing? I mean, let's well, just... I, I don't really care who won, to be honest. I mean, the, the player. All right, he got 120 million dollars. Yeah. I feel like that's a win, no matter how you slice it, uh, no matter how long you're getting paid for, what the guaranteed money is. But basically, it's it essentially comes down to a three years, 76 million dollar investment. Like that's the guaranteed money. That's what Ayuk is. The, that's what he's made for himself. And then the Niners, you know, have an out after three years. Um, I don't know, Dan, it, was there any part of you, though, that wondered why it took so long? And, and why done. we had to well, talk about it for yeah. as long as we did? I think Brandon Ayuk, as I understand it, that that same deal was on the table August 10th? Reportedly. August 10th, August 12th, August 13th. You know, I... That, that, to me, is the PR game if you're talking about trying to win a deal. That is, to me, I, I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's correct. You know, I'd like to think that Adam Schefter and Diana Rossini of The Athletic are two individuals that are professionals and, you know, trustworthy news sources. But th that is the Niners trying to basically say that this deal was something that Ayuk wouldn't give into. That basically, like, we stood our ground and that we didn't lose. To me, that that is... That is them trying to tell us that they didn't lose the deal, which is something about this contract. If there's anything that I don't care about this contract, it's it's who won and who lost. When you think about it, in this offseason, there are two franchises that have been really similar as far as dealing with their players. And I would never associate John Lynch, who I think is a good CEO at the end of the day. He toes the line. He's the adult in the room. Kyle Shanahan could be a bit emotional. But really, when you think about it, as pragmatic and as logical as the 49ers and as smart as their front office can be, they and the Dallas Cowboys were really similar in the way they handled their players this offseason. And Jerry Jones, to me, is a buffoon. I've said to you repeatedly, he's just a smart businessman. I take that back. I mean, he's printing money. Do you think he remembers that? <laughs> it may be an article tomorrow. Just stay tuned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got we to gotta figure out who this ghostwriter is for Saturdays on the game. <laughs> you, if you're tuned in right now, call in. I don't know what kind of software is using to transcribe all this stuff. I mean, the amount yeah, of junk that comes out of our word. mouth. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how he figures it out. But I look, at, I think the, the Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers are really similar in the way they handled their players. C.D. Lamb came in just days before Brandon Ayuk. Dak Prescott is still out there, and so is, is Trent Williams. And it's just peculiar because I think, and I give Lynch and company a lot more credit than I do that of Jerry Jones when it comes to handling your business, so to speak. But, it, but it's the Detroits, it's the Philadelphias that lock up their players well before any of this nonsense. So I'm just curious, from a Niners perspective, who are just so smart about everything else, why they are so similar like that of the Dallas Cowboys, who I do not think are very smart when it comes to Jerry Jones and handling these sort of things. But yet the two mirror one another when it comes to signing players and having to take this long to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. I mean, look, we had uh, Brian Baldinger on yesterday morning of the NFL Network, and here's what he had to say when asked. I, I asked him personally. I was just like, dude, who won this deal? I believe that everybody wins. John Lynch said he wanted to keep Brandon Ayuk. I'm sure Kyle Shanahan never wanted to lose him, but he understands the business side of things. I think the winner of the deal, honestly, are the 49ers and everything that goes with it, whether it's Jed York, 49er fans, whether it's Brock Purdy, the 49ers win because not every team can figure out how to structure these deals where you can keep all of your great players. Most teams can't do it. Most teams don't have the wherewithal or the Billings to do it. The fact that they drafted well in key spots and they've been able to keep those players, that's a testament to the 49ers in the front office. Well, that's true. They've been able to keep just an unbelievable amount of talent on this roster, and they've been willing to pay for it. Like, in total cash, they will have paid close to $350 million for 2024. That's tops in the NFL. To compare with the Dallas Cowboys, the Cowboys, I think, will be spending, assuming they don't, invest in Dak Prescott, the lowest amount of cash in the NFL. So Jed York and the Niners have put their money 
where their mouths are. And the one thing that I do have, I don't know, just a, a sense of Dan is that this is not the last time that they can do that, but that the train eventually will come to a halt if and when they pay Brock Purdy his massive sum of money. So I'm glad that they paid Brandon Ayuk because I think he keeps the Niners at a really, really high level. I think he's you know, one of the top 10 wide receivers in football. Last year, he was a top five receiver, statistically speaking. But it does align the Niners for a last dance. Like this is this is their last run with this current group of ridiculously talented players, and that's why there's more importance now in this season, perhaps than ever before. And that's saying a lot for a team that's been to five or four NFC Championship games the last five years. Yeah, I think this is them saying the this is the last time we can do this because you'll go after Brock Purdy. Most likely you're going to sign Purdy, whatever that number is, $55, $60 million, but you're not bringing back Talanoa Hufunga, and you are not bringing back Charvarius Ward, and you're not bringing back Diamador Lenore, and you may not bring back Debo Samuel. So this is it in terms of signing everybody because you just simply can't afford it. There's just not enough money in the till to go around. So this is sort of like Sean McVay a couple of years back where you just push all your chips in the middle of the table and saying, we're living for today. I don't want to hear about, can we afford this player next year? There's no guarantees that any of us will be here tomorrow, let alone next year. Super Bowls are hard to come by. They've been so elusive for the 49ers. As much, you know, as much grief as I give Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys, it's, you know, it's been a while. It's been a minute since the 49ers. They've been to Super Bowls, but they haven't won one since the the 1990s as well. So when your window's ajar and you have an opportunity, the hell with everything else. Just go for it today. And I think at the end of the day, that was sort of the collective mentality. Well, and just financially speaking, like this, this Brandon Ayuk deal is essentially a three for 76. I mean, that that's what he's guaranteed. And the Niners have an out in 2027, which I think is interesting because that's about the time that Purdy's big money is going to kick in. Assuming he gets paid... Brock Purdy this year will make, I don't know, $965,000 in his, you know, two-bedroom apartment in East San Jose, wherever he's living. And next year, no matter what he signs for, he's going to make about $1.1 million. You know, maybe he'll be able to get himself a a third bedroom, maybe one less roommate. And then that's when the big payday kicks in. You know, 2026 maybe 2027 is when the big cap numbers start to come in. And that's around the time that Brennan and I might be off the books. So the Niners have, I think done a pretty nice job of no matter who they've signed of aligning these deals to their liking. So I think Brennan and I, again, not to go back to winners and losers. I think they both won because Brennan and I got the money that he wanted. I think he also got the respect that he wanted as one of the five $30 million AAV receivers in the NFL. He wanted elite top tier wide receiver, one money. He got the Amon Ross St. Brown deal. He's making 30 million, which Tyreek Hill, CD lamb, Justin Jefferson, St. Brown and AJ Brown are all making. He's in that group. So he gets the respect and the Niners also have been able to configure it to an extent where even if this is a deal that goes South, which is possible. I don't know. Maybe Brandon Ayuk has already played his best football. But even if it goes south, they've also set themselves up safely to get out of this deal at about the time they're going to have to pay their most important player. When you talk about Brock Purdy's contract, that's really why we're at where we're at because of the unique, the very unique opportunity to have a quarterback with his potential and his talent level to be under team control in a rookie deal that's less than a million dollars. Think about how rare that is. Think about how different it would be if it was any other quarterback. You're not, you're not signing any of these guys. And that's why when people want to get into the conversation of, well, he's not a top-tier quarterback. He's not as good as Patrick Mahomes. I can't even put him in the tier two. You know, I like think Mike Sando in the Seattle Times came out with his quarterback tearing and And everybody who spends so much time and and dividing the room as to whether he's good or legitimate or worthy of the $50 million or $60 million, is he a system quarterback? Who the hell cares? You have a talented quarterback who can execute Kyle Shanahan's offense to a T that is coming in on a rookie deal as Mr. Irrelevant. That's allowing you to do all of this stuff. Brock Purdy is where this all begins and ends. 
the fact that Brock Purdy is on the cheap for the next two years is why you have Brandon Ayuk and Trent Williams and all of these other players and an opportunity to go for a Super Bowl. So just think how silly it is wasting your time on whether whether or not he's as good as Patrick Mahomes or Justin Herbert or fill in the blank. As long as he's good enough with what it is that you're able to bring back. Here's the other thing I would say when you talk about how both sides won and Baldinger talking about how the 49ers as well as Brandon Ayuk won. That's true maybe right now. But if they get off to that slow start, oh, they yeah. lose to the Jets, they start one and three. Even if Ayuk plays poorly, let's say they beat the Jets, but Ayuk has one catch or two catches for like seven yards. This will all resurface. And so this idea that, oh, everybody's happy, the fact that he's into camp so late that this thing has been hanging around the locker room uh, and things have been sort of squirrely between the two and you get off to a slow start and maybe some of these losses early on in the season cost you that number one seed, well, you can look back to these negotiations and saying that's where we screwed ourselves. 888 is the number. Evan Giddings and Dan Devone with you on 95.7 The Game, taking you up until noon here on Saturdays, as always. If you want to get in on the conversation again, 888-957-9570. Shout out to our YouTube and Twitch chat, powered by First or Cal Credit Union, the Xfinity Mobile text line. Feel free to chime in. Be happy to read any comments, get your calls on the air if you want to get in on it. I mean, to me, the, the question now is, what now? With not necessarily just Brandon Ayuk, but with the San Francisco 49ers. You know, where has your mind shifted as a fan, is it squarely nine days away, Monday night, Levi's Stadium, 515 kickoff, Aaron Rodgers, the New York Jets? You know, what matters to you right now? Does it matter that a side won or lost? Does it matter how the contract is structured? Does it matter that Brock Purdy's contract is looming over this entire thing? Does it matter that these things might linger during the season? Does it matter that Trent Williams is still not here at this point? And that, according to Mike Garofolo of NFL Network, that they're not particularly close. You know, is that something that I guess, I, like I was curious, Dan, yesterday, I was with Shasky the past two days, but I was curious to see once the deal was signed for IUK, if people's ire would be transferred in a sense to Trent Williams. I I, I just look at him as like a, a package deal almost because I, I, I feel like the big fella is going to be in here one way or another. And... They're going to, if they found a way to get the Ayuk deal done, I just feel like inevitably 71 is going to be in the house. And if there's a position and a player that needs less of a ramp up period than anyone, I think it's probably Trent. Yeah, I think there's a collective sense of confidence that this is going to get done. And the 49ers just simply are not that stupid. (laughs) They're not going to go into a season against the Jets in that defensive line without Trent Williams. They know that. I mean, if you're going to lock up Brandon Ayuk and you're going for your Super Bowl right now, well, it just doesn't make sense not to get Trent Williams in camp. So he'll be here. And and I think all of us sort of work under that assumption. I think that now it just, now it makes sense. This looks like a team, and and we'll see. You have to stay away from injuries. I think the defense... Um, is really sort of a question mark in, in, in certain ways, on paper. Tremendous players, and we can get into Nick Sorensen and company. But now it looks like a Super Bowl team. Again, do they get there? Who the hell knows? But now now it all makes sense because the idea of and the conversations that have sort of dominated our show over the last couple of months that we were going to cobble together this other wide receiver position with Jacob Cowling and a and a Pearsall or maybe a, uh, a Chris Con. I mean, we were trying to convince ourselves of something that just was inferior. And now that Ayuk's on one side of the field, Debo in the slots, Jennings, you got Kittle lined up at a tight end, McCaffrey set up behind Brock Purdy. Now, now it looks like that team that everybody envisioned that, that can make another run into Super Bowl. It's funny you brought up the wide receiver room because this was something that I think it was Matt Barrows of The Athletic who was – talking about but one of the reasons why Shanahan and and Lynch I'm not sure if you heard them on Wednesday this was before Ayuk signed it was before the practice that he was expected to be at and then wasn't and I think it kind of preceded really the final negotiations but they sounded to me they sounded pretty pissed they sounded pretty pissed at where Brandon Ayuk was or was not and one of the reasons Dan I, I believe and I know it it might be a stretch, 
But I think it was because Ayuk might have cost them a player. Like, Ayuk was on the roster yeah. on cut day, and he was not practicing, and he was not in camp. So they kept him on the 53-man, which also meant that they kept seven wide receivers. This is a team that generally has five active on game day. So by doing that, someone like your sixth-round selection, Jarek Kingston, an offensive lineman, he gets plucked because you have to waive him. You can't keep him on the roster. There were multiple players that the Niners had claimed by other teams that they could not protect because Brandon Ayuk was occupying that roster spot. And so I think one of the reasons why they were angry at him was, yes, he wasn't practicing and they would like to have him in shape and be in camp and all the rest, but it's because he literally cost them a player. And that is the kind of residue that I don't think comes back to the uh, the forefront unless, to your point, he doesn't play well. But that's something that could linger. Like, that's something that I do think might stick with the coaching staff or with the front office. Not that Brandon Ayuk's a Malkatan and not that he's a bad person, but the way that he forced the Niners' hand, whether he won or lost this deal, I don't care what side of the fence you fall on, the fact of the matter is I do believe the Niners also feel like he cost them a potential player. And that is that is important. So did he cost them a player, or did the 49ers do that to themselves? You can make that case. Yeah, I mean, I think that the 49ers having to wait this long and using now that suddenly we got a deadline is before heads begin to roll, things get done. The season was looming. It's now days away, and you sign a contract. Like That has been sort of their mode operandi over the last couple of years now, and I think that just simply has to change. I think the 49ers, in a lot of ways, made this bed. I mean, again, when I use Detroit... And Amon Ross, say Brown or Jefferson or Philadelphia, who annually locks up Hurts, A.J. Brown. They do that back in March. Yeah. And the 49ers wait until now, where you have this deadline suddenly now, is very, very much uh, evident to everybody that finally things get done. And so while you can put this on Brandon Ayuk, I think at the end of the day, it might be the San Francisco 49ers that sort of create this whole mess. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, I think that's why Shanahan and Lynch were, were pissed. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, I, you could certainly criticize the way they do business. And it, it's funny to me, though, because I generally think about franchises in football. Like the Eagles got stuff done early. They probably, I don't know if they saved themselves money, but they got deals done with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Yeah. And they kept two wide receivers in that building for their price. I don't think the Niners are any less of a franchise than the Philadelphia Eagles, though. But that's the way the way that they differ is how they do business. Because on paper, if I tell you that the Niners each now of the last five off seasons essentially have paid and kept their homegrown top tier talent. Maybe not last five off seasons, but five players. You got Kittle. Warner, Debo, Bosa, and now Ayuk. All those guys are under lock and key. I'm assuming next summer, Brock Purdy will follow. So it isn't as if they don't have a track record of keeping their guys. It's just a matter of when they get the deals done. So to me, it, it all depends on what you do on the field. Yeah. And the difference between this season and the last few off seasons, last year is probably the, the, the closest. But when you are top dog, when you are expected to win the NFC, and anything less than a Super Bowl appearance, I wouldn't go as far as to say a Super Bowl title, but a Super Bowl anything less than a Super Bowl appearance is going to be an unsuccessful season for this group. I mean, that's that that that's just the way that they have set things up. It's and it's also you know a burden. I think that they believe that's a good thing because they have so much talent, Dan. Yeah, I'm with you. But again, getting back to the comparison with Philadelphia. If they, again, get off to the slow start, and if it's attributed to this bit of a lingering or a hangover from this off season, then therein lies the difference between the two organizations. Now, I don't know what you know, Philadelphia imploded a year ago, despite starting 5-0, and oh, but, you know, Philadelphia, ten and one. Philadelphia doesn't necessarily have to worry about, you know, any of that, because I think A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and, and Hertz and all these guys have been in camp and it's not something that you can point a finger at as being uh, a potential reason and the cause and effect of the slow start. And there may not be any there, there to that argument, but you do create uh, an opportunity as people are want to do to point a finger and saying, this is the reason why the 49ers got off to a slow start. 
you shot yourself in the foot for that number one seed in the first month of the campaign, and it's all because of fill it in. Is it Trent Williams? Is it Brandon Ayuk? So you, you just sort of leave yourself a little susceptible when you wait this long to get things done. You put more pressure on yourself. Yeah. I mean, the expectations are a Super Bowl appearance. Heavy is the crown. But it doesn't mean that people don't want to wear it. You know, people are gunning for that crown. People have been gunning in the NFC for the Niners crown for what feels like five or six years, really since they made that that first Super Bowl run with, with Shanahan's team in 2019. They have been the crown jewel of the NFC. I realize that they haven't won a Super Bowl, but each and every year it feels like whether it's national media members, you hear players talk about the respect they have for the Niners, at least if they're not trash talking, Everyone understands that they're top dog, and so do they. And so that's why th- this year is even more important than last year because I-, I don't believe that the talent that surrounds Brock Purdy or the talent, really, that surrounds Kyle Shanahan is going to be around next season. And so that's why I'm excited for the year because if there's one thing that could erase all of the distractions and lingering contract hold-ins and hold-outs... It's winning football games because I do believe that the Niners players, and this was something that I was, I don't know, a little iffy on. Like, I, I don't know how you felt about this, Dan, but do you think that this offseason that the Niners, that a lot of 49ers are more concerned about getting paid than getting themselves set up for a Super Bowl that run? Could, it could be the case. I, I think... <laughs> I think they want both. Yeah, but. I mean, I, I mean, no fault of the players, right? There's a reason why it's the not-for-long league. It's always about getting taken care of. So, yeah, I think... Well, at the end of the day, just to sort of answer your question, I think Kyle Shanahan and all the 49er players, maybe you have a meeting and just saying, I don't want to think about Brock Purdy's contract. I don't want to talk about windows being open. I don't want to talk about the future. We have a team that's good enough to beat the Jets. Let's let's just eat what's on our plate. Let's just be in sort of this uh, in this insular mode, like it, where we're just in a vacuum. It's about winning a title. There's so much conjecture and talk about next year and windows being open. Just play some damn football and beat who's ever on the schedule that Sunday. Just play for today. We're so uber focused on on next year and re-signing guys and windows being ajar. How good is Brock Purdy? Who the hell cares? Just go out. You got everybody intact. Win your Super Bowl and forget it. All that other stuff will take care of itself. And you'll have enough time next offseason to go through the song and dance. But in terms of right now, the focus should be exclusively on beating the Jets. See, I, I think one of the reasons, and we can get into this on the other side, the reason why they're in this position is, yes, it's the way they do business. It's who the Niners are. But it's also because they haven't broken through. I'm, I know we can't play that what if game, but I'd be very curious to see how they'd approach this offseason if they had beaten the Chiefs. Because I'm not so sure. Where are people at now? 888-957-9570 is the number. Brandon Ayuk is under lock and key. Trent Williams still is holding out for the San Francisco 49ers. Nine days away from kickoff. Monday night, 515 against the New York Jets at Levi's Stadium. All eyes are going to be on the Niners that night and they hope that they'll have all their players available, ready to go. They do have one big one, their wide receiver one. He will be there, in all probability, on the field come week one against the 